Okay, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, everyone. Welcome to our class on Quranic Arabic. So inshallah, we're going to be doing lesson three, which is the continuation of Surah Al-Fatiha. And we're going to go deep into verse four and five. So, bismillah rahman rahim So inshallah, uh, the, the, the fourth verse of Surah Fatiha is Maliki Yaw Middin. Okay, Malik Yomuddin. Now, if we go into the meaning of Malik, actually, there is a very, you know, um, the word, the, the root letter of Mim, Lam, well, actually, I'll write it, Mim, Lam, and Kaf. Okay, there's many, many words that can come from these three root letters. So, for example, with just one haraka change, actually, you can make so many derivatives and so many root, root words. I mean, you know, uh, branching out from this root word. So Malik means master. Master or even, you can even say owner. Okay. Malik. You can even just say, oh, ana maliku hadha al-bayt. I am the owner of this house. For example, you know, you own something, it's in your ownership. But if you just uh, change the harakat around a little bit, then it becomes malak. Malak means angel. Okay, and the plural of malak is malaika, as you can see over here. And if you just make the fatha into a kasra and you make malak into malik, malikun, then it becomes king. Malik means king, you know. So let's go into the in-depth meaning of what Malik actually means. And I have the, my presentation over here. So go to Maliki Yomiddin. Over here, Maliki Yomiddin. And the translation sometimes could be Malik uh, Sovereign Yomiddin, the Day of Judgment. We're going to go into what this means as well. So in actually, in other recitations of the Quran, because as you know, as you might know, um, there are actually uh, 10, 10 or even more different variations of the recitation of the Quran. They're called the Saba'a uh, Qira'a or Ashara Qira'a. Okay, and you know, you can get an ijazah in all three of all 10 of them. You know, uh, my brother actually, uh, Sheikh Tahseen, uh, he's younger than me, but I still call him Sheikh. MashaAllah, he has ijazah in. Um, in the Hafs, which is the one that we have. And he also has Ijazah in two other ones, uh, which I can't remember the names of. So the, the Quran that we read, you know, the green Quran, the, the one that we all have, and pretty much everybody reads this one, is, is the Qira'a or the recitation of Hafs bin Asim or Hafs min Asim, I think. Or we just say the Hafs. So meaning this recitation has come all the way from the Prophet Sallallahu but through one chain of narration. So even the Quran has a chain of narration, you know. Anyway, inshallah, one day maybe I'll do a course on the history of the Quran. Maybe that could be our next, you know, uh, topic for another course after we finish one of these books. Because very, very interesting how the Quran has come to us in the 21st century, you know. Okay. So anyway, in another qira'a or in another recitation, um, it's, re it's written as, or it's recited as not Maliki Yawmiddin, but Maliki Yawmiddin, okay? Maliki Yawmiddin. So what's the difference between Malik and Malik? So who can tell me what does Malik mean, everybody? Go ahead and type in the chat box. So Malik with the elongated meme. Malik means what? And Malik means what? Go ahead and type in the chat box. Yes, so Malik means master or owner slash owner. It's a very generic meaning or like not generic, but like it's a general meaning. And Malik means what? It's a very specific meaning, which means king. No, Malik means king. Malak with a fatha would mean angel, okay? So yes, get your head around this, write this down if you want to uh, remember this, it's very interesting, okay. So some prefer this recitation because 
every Malik, every Malik is a Malik, but not every Malik is a Malik. So <laughs> let's get this tongue twister. What does Malik mean? It means king. And Malik means owner. So every king is the owner. Because if a king has the kingdom, then everything in the kingdom belongs to the king, right? Everything in this sovereignty, it belong or whatever state, uh, country, whatever, it belongs to the king, basically. But not every owner is a king. You know, I'm owner of this house. That doesn't make me a king. Okay. So that's the reason why some people, uh, some some uh, students would prefer to recite Maliki Yomiddin. And that's actually correct. If you say Maliki Yomiddin, that's also correct, by the way, <clears throat> because it's a verified um, recitation from the Prophet. Another uh, uh, preference or another opinion is that no, actually, they would prefer to recite Maliki Yomiddin. Why? Because it has more letters. So, you know, Malik, as you can see over here, Malik, how many letters does Malik have? Go ahead and type in the chat box. And how many letters does Malik have? So Malik has four letters and Malik only has three letters. So they would prefer to recite Malik Yomiddin because it has more letters and more letters means more reward. Who knows what the reward of reciting one letter of the Quran is? Who can tell me the hadith in their own words? Can anyone unmute themselves and or raise their hand to tell me what the hadith is about reciting even one letter of the Quran? Yes. Nabiha, very good. So 10 times or 10 rewards even for one letter as mentioned in the hadith. So, you know, alif, lam, meme is not one letter, but yes, alif is one letter, lam is one letter, meme is one letter. So obviously, you know, reciting Surah Fatiha every day, the more letters that you can recite, the more reward you will get. SubhanAllah. So can you imagine this is how our scholars were thinking, you know? <sighs> okay. So that is what Maliki Yawmiddin means, okay? Interesting, yes, very interesting. You know, let's so let's think about it. The fact that you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He owns us and He is the king, He's the sovereign. What does Yawm al-Din mean? Oh, wait, let me go back to Yawm al-Din. So, Yawm, this is a new word that I want everybody to uh, memorize. What does Yawm mean? Yawm means day. Okay, go ahead and type in the chat box. Yawm means day. Okay, what does yom mean? I want everybody to write it. Yom means day, and it's a singular because we're going to use this word later on. Okay, it's going to come again and again in the Quran. Yes, yom means day. Now, the last word over here, a deen. Deen means, so we usually think deen means religion, yeah? But deen, it doesn't just mean religion, it means also recompense recompense okay uh is that how you spell recompense i'm not sure okay recompense okay meaning that you will get whatever you put out you know you you will receive the rewards or receive the com consequences of whatever actions you did in this world yeah um and it's very interesting because the word Dain, if you change the word Deen, you make the you make the kasra into a fatha, then it becomes the word Dain. And does anyone know what Dain means? Dain, Dainun. So Dain means I think it's an Urdu word as well. Yes, it means debt. Yes. So obviously, a debt you need to repay your debt, right? So it's very similar to that concept that, you know, whatever you put out in this world, you have to repay for it, you know, in the day of judgment. Very interesting, yes. So, um, so yeah, now you know that the word deen actually has two meanings. Maliki um, yawmid deen, yes. So 
You know how we talked about Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. MashaAllah, we spent nearly one whole lesson just talking about Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. Now, when someone reads this, they're going to be thinking about Allah's immense mercy. And they may be saying, oh, I can do whatever I want. Allah is the most merciful. But no, no. It is also the fact that Allah is the most merciful, but he will account, he will judge accordingly for every single person. So no one should be stepping, overstepping the boundaries of Allah. No one should be breaking the limits and the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, isn't that amazing? SubhanAllah, think about it now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful indeed, but he is also the most just. He's not just going to let anything go away so easily like that. <clears throat> and so this also uh, brings in us the concept of love plus what? What's the opposite of love? Not the opposite, but the counter. <laughs> love plus fear, you know? You know, love and fear needs to be in the heart of a believer, subhanAllah. So can you imagine just from Surah Fatiha, we are feeling the love of Allah and we're also fearing, feeling the fear of Allah, which we both need in this world, subhanAllah. Um, yawm, so for example, Yawm al Jum'ah, Yawm al Qiyamah. So the word Yawm means day. And the plural of Yawm is Ayyam. So you can write that down. Ayyam means days. Okay. Deen has two meanings, system of life, or it means judgment. So the translation is the master of the day of judgment. Okay. Um, yes. Aisha, could you please read this paragraph? He is the master of everything, even today. But he has given us some authority in this world. On that day, no one shall have any power. Allah says in Surah Abasa that on that day, everyone will run away from his brother, his mother, his father, his wife, and his son. It will be a terrible day for wrongdoers. The day of judgment is one of the most important days of our life. For example, in the academic year in a school, the day of the results is the most important day for a student. He made us Muslims without our asking, just out of his mercy. Now we must ask that he grant us Jannah. Therefore, we have strong hope that he will do so. We should have excitement when we hear this verse. Simultaneously, our sins should make us fearful and push us to change our lives from the time of that prayer. Mm. Thank you. Jazakallah khair. Mm. So let's unpack this uh, slightly. So he is the master of everything, even today. But he's given us some authority in this world. Subhanallah. You see, you know, what's happening in this world, you know, um, with so many countries, you know, under, uh, you know, corrupt leadership, corrupt politics. You know, people are going to be fighting for power, fighting for authority, fighting for um, position, etc., you know, and it's and unfortunately, it's the innocent civilians who have to uh, you know, survive this and um, tolerate this, and not tolerate it, but you know, have to deal with the pain of that. But in the end, oh, in the end, everything will be destroyed. All hierarchies, all systems will be destroyed, and on that day, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is the only master. He is the ultimate authority. He is the ultimate sovereign. You know, so subhanAllah, like, it's just amazing because on the day of judgment, um, so one hadith, it reminds me of one hadith uh, in which it says that just before the day of judgment, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will destroy the whole world. The whole world will be destroyed. Nothing will be in existence. And then Allah will say, Limanil Limanil mulk al -yawm. To who is the dominion in this day? You know, who has authority on this day? Who has uh, power on this day? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will resurrect everybody and, and start the judgment. So in, you know, in a way, it should make us feel 
um, fearful, of course. But as it's saying over here, we should have excitement when we hear this verse. Can you imagine how being excited for the day of judgment? Subhanallah, you know, um, it's a it's a totally different mindset, isn't it? Um, to be excited for the day of judgment, well, that's like even, you know, would you do you feel more hope or more fear to, if you think about the day of judgment? You know, but honestly, a true believer, you know, has been living their life according to the, the, the way of, of Islam, the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, under the laws of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And so, you know, there is great hope that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will encompass us with his mercy. What does Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala say in Surah Abasa? That on that day, everyone will run away from his brother, his mother, his father, his wife, his son, SubhanAllah. You know, these are the people that we spend so much time on, so much connection on. We have so much pain and from their separation, yet so much um, pleasure, you know, pain and pleasure. We're so close with, with these people. But on that day, they will literally run away from you. Can you imagine? They will literally run away from you. Or they will chase you to get one good deed and you will be running away from them. <laughs> SubhanAllah. May Allah Ta'ala protect us. This, are, this is for the wrongdoers. Um, for the believers, they will be together. You know, they will they will have they will still have the that love between them. The day of judgment is one of the most important days of our life. For example, in the academic year, the day of results is the most important day for a student. You know, I remember when I was a student in doing my alima course. You know, uh, basically, if you fail the exam if you get below 50 in the average of all your exams not even 50 like 70 percent if you if you get b below 70 percent in all the exams then you have to repeat the whole year so behind you have to repeat the whole year and i remember all the students would be so so worried um and you know we we're just constantly we would be making we would be on the top of top of our iman in those few days while the teachers were correcting the exams you know and so i just i just when i read this i just remember that i'm just like whoa we're so worried for repeating one year of our life of our school year and imagine on the day of judgment there's no repeats you know, we can't go back to the dunya to repeat our life and do better. You know, in this life, we can. If we fail university, we can just do another semester, you know, pay a little bit more and do it again. There's always a way out. But on that day, no, you can't. No matter how much you want to go back, you can't. <clears throat> Subhanallah. Isn't that amazing, you know? And so, inshallah, when we're reciting this ayah, uh, Maliki, Yawmuddin, all these things should come into your mind. Any questions around around this, Maliki, Yawmuddin? No? Okay, let's continue on then. SubhanAllah. Next one. Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in. So, Iyaka means you alone. Now, Iya means only and this ka means you uh we're going to be learning this right now but this ka means you for masculine okay because um masculine is the general it's not that we're saying that allah is masculine or feminine or whatever it's a neutral gender as well okay we don't know like allah doesn't have a gender basically it's allah is free from these binary genders binary or non-binary who knows okay now we'll do means we worship so ibadah means worship abid means worshiper and ma'bud means the one who is worshipped so tell me what is the root letter from all these uh conjugations what is the root letter go ahead and type in the chat box what are the three root letters Yes. Um, whose mic is on? Okay. 
Okay. I'm just going to be all. Yes. Ein. Yes. Ein. Ba and dal. Yeah. Abada. Abada. So abada has many, many uh, root words, as you can see. So na'abudu ibada abid ma'bud. And if you want to learn about um, all the root words that can come from one three-letter word, then you learn uh, uh, a science called Al Sarf, which is called morphology in Arabic language, okay? Morphology. Anyway, so Nabudu. Okay, someone has their mic on. Could you please turn off your mic? Whoever it is. It actually. Okay. It's a bit random. Okay, we're just going to continue on. Okay. Um, wa means and. So we know that wa means. Ia means you alone. And ka means you. And nasta'in means we ask for help. To worship or to do anything, we need Allah's help. Okay. So let's go back to the presentation. You, it is you we worship and it is you we ask for help. So there is a sudden shift from the third person to the second person. Did you realize this? Because now we're saying, you know, the, fir the first three verses was Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Allah, you know, all praise to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, the most merciful, the most just. Maliki Yawmiddin. We're talking about a third person, but now we're talking directly to Allah and we're saying, it is you we worship, O oh Allah, and it is you we ask for help. So it is done to keep, so this sudden shift is to keep the, uh, to keep the reader attentive. Okay, because if you're shifting from third person to second person, um, then it's like, oh, okay, have to pay attention to what is being said here. After having praised and recognized Allah, we then start to worship and seek help from him. Why do you think worship is put before seeking help? Why do we say, first and then who, who, can, who can give me some um, explanation in their own words? And there's no wrong answers, but um, let's just read some of your answers if anyone has any. So the question is, why do we say Why do we say before seeking help? I'm going to the person who has... Okay. Okay. So Gulhan is saying, just like when making dua, we first praise and then ask. Excellent. Very good. We see we single out Allah as the one who helps. Absolutely. Indeed. So you know the the fact is is that if you worship Allah then that means you seek help from Allah as well. You know, the one that you worship is the one who deserves to be asked for seeking help. Yeah? Because if you worship Allah, that means he has the power to help you in whatever thing that you're asking. And yes, as Gulhan is saying, it, it is one of the etiquettes of making dua that you first praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then you um, ask for whatever you want okay and similarly in surah fatiha that's exactly what we're doing we're saying alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen all praises to allah the lord of the worlds and then ar rahman ar rahim maliki yawmiddin you know we're praising allah we're talking about his qualities and then we say 
Ya Allah, we worship you. And Ya Allah, we ask in you for help. And then we make a dua. Then the next verse is actually a dua. Hopefully we can get to that, uh, maybe. Okay, so go ahead, Gulhan. Could you please read this paragraph? Oh, uh, let me, I have to unmute you. Sorry. Yes, go ahead. Oh, perfect. Um, this is the mission statement of a Muslim, uh, the purpose of our life to worship Allah. Uh, he said, I have not created the jinns and the humans except that they worship me. Um, continue. Yep. Um, what is worship? Prayer, fasting, arms, pilgrimage, um, inviting towards Islam, um, giving good advice, struggle to avoid what is prohibited in Islam. Um, uh, even uh, studying, earning, serving others, etc., is also worship if we do it to please Allah only. Yep. Go ahead. Um, uh, in worship, uh, first comes the salah. Uh, he who abandons the salah demolishes his deen. We are so helpless that without the help of Allah, we cannot quench our thirst. Then how can we worship Him without His help? Um, Oh Allah, I need, hang on one second. Oh Allah, I need your help to worship you in this salah and in all those things such as studies, work, shopping, etc. Um, that I will do till the next salah. Ask Allah from the depths of your heart. Oh Allah, help me to worship you in the best way. This dua is taught in the last les lesson of this book. Okay. Thank you. Jazakumullah khair for that. Yes, so subhanAllah, you know, so this is just telling us the importance of worship and telling us the importance of asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help in everything. You know, the thing is, is that we're very dependent on Allah. As, as independent as we want to be, you know, we don't want anyone to depend, like, you know, want anyone in, to help us or anything. But actually, we are dependent all on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you know, we need to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves it, loves when we make dua to him, when we raise our hands like a helpless, you know, like a helpless, like, you know how helpless we can be. Cry to Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that, you know. In the dunya, you know, when someone cries, we're just like, oh, you know, I mean, you know, sometimes if they keep on doing it you know complaining crying gets annoying you know but, but when you're doing it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with true tawakkul and um, with love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that <sighs> may Allah ta'ala give us tawfiq to really make this beautiful connection with him so much so that you know we can cry to him in every salah Okay, now for the Arabic grammar component of our lesson. So in the last lesson, we learned the word he, they, you, you all, I, and we. Yeah, so we learned, what was it? Hua, and then hum, and then anta, antum, and then ana, and nahnu. Yes, nahnu means we. So now these are called detached pronouns. What are they called? Detached pronouns. These are called detached. They're not attached to anything, as you can see. These are words by themselves. Or you can even call them, in English, they are called personal pronouns. He, she, they, this, that, etc. Not this, that. He, she, they. So these are words by themselves. However, now we are going to be learning the new concept, which is attached pronouns, or another word is possessive pronouns. Okay? Possessive pronouns. And we're going to learn the coinciding or, you know, the other side of what we have learned. So 
Um, so let me just explain this. So in this lesson, we will learn the words for his, their, your, your, my, and our. In fact, they are not words in Arabic. They are suffi suffixed to nouns, verbs, or prepositions. So these are not words by themselves. You need to attach it to something else for it to make sense. That's why they're called attached pronouns. We therefore learn from these forms by attaching them to a noun, rob, and we learned about what rob means. Lord, sustainer, cherisher, the one who takes care of us and helps us grow. Please note that these attachments occur almost how many times? 10,000 times in the Quran, 10,000. They're extremely important. Make sure that you practice them thoroughly. The word rob occurs 970 times in the Quran. So we're going to use these attached pronouns with the word rob. Okay, so um, how, so I would like everybody to write this down. Okay, I'm going to share my, um, I'm going to share my whiteboard. And I would like everybody to copy from the whiteboard, inshallah. Okay, so you can write the title, uh, uh, attach pronouns. Oh, I don't know why that's doing that. Attached pronouns. Forgive my handwriting. You know, it's a bit hard always writing on the screen. Okay, so the first one is um, who. Who means his. His slash its. Because who can be used for a, um, a non-living thing as well. So this is how we're going to do it. We're going to do equation. Rabbu plus who equals Rabbuhu. Now, everybody, go ahead and type in the chat box. Rabbu plus who equals Rabbuhu. Rabbuhu means? What does Rabbuhu mean? I want everybody to write it. Rabbuhu means his Rabb or his Lord. Okay? Yes. So if you make a sentence, then you can say, Allahu Rabbuhu. Allah is his Lord. Okay? And obviously the his is referring back to someone who was mentioned in the sentence before. Okay, great. Next one is... Whom. Whom means theirs. There. It's used for plural. So, Rabbu plus whom equals Rabbu whom. Rabbu whom. What does Rabbu whom mean? Rabbu whom. What does Rabbu whom mean, everybody? Go ahead and type in the chat box. Yes, Rabbuhum means their Lord. Okay, so we're talking about a group of people. Okay. The next one is Ka. Ka. Ka means your. But for masculine. Because Ki is for feminine. So anyway, we're just going to learn the masculine for now. Rabbu. Plus ka, Rabbu plus ka equals Rabbu ka. Rabbu ka. What does Rabbu ka mean now, everybody? Rabbu ka. Your Lord. Rabbu ka. Your Lord. Rabbu ka Allah. Rabbu ka Rahman. Rabbu ka ala kulli shayin qadir. Inna Rabbi Rab Inna Rabbaka. Okay. And then the next one is Kum. Kum. Kum means your. But for plural. Okay. Plural. Um, so let's do Rabbu plus Kum. Rabbu. What is it? Rabbu Kum. Rabbu. 
Rabbukum means <clears throat> your Lord. But it's for plural, meaning you're talking to a group of people. So you say, Ya ayyuhal muslimun, Rabbukum, Allah, Rabbukum ar-Rahman, Rabbukum rahim etc. Okay. And the last two that we're going to learn for today. If you put a ya on the end of a word, then it means my, e. So, rabbu, or just rub plus e, it actually becomes, what do you think it becomes, everybody? If you add the e, the ya to the end of rub, then what does it become? It actually becomes rabbi, okay? Rabbi. The dhamma goes away. Rabbi. You, maybe you have heard of this before. Rabbi zidni ilma, you know. What does Rabbi mean? Rabbi means my Lord. Yes. Rabbi. Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi. Yes, okay. And the last one is na. What does na mean? Na it means our. And this is the one that we have heard all the time. Rabbu. Or Rabba plus Na equals Rabbana. Have you heard of this before? Rabbana. And what does Rabbana mean? Our Lord Rabbana. Who can tell me a dua which has Rabbana in it? Because there are 40 duas that have Rabbana at the start yes Aisha very good Rabbana atina fid dunya hasana yes Surah Baqarah Rabbana faghfir lana dhunubana yes very good um, Rabbana uh, Rabbana hablana min azwajina yes very good yes and actually, there are there are forty duas that have Rabb, Rabbana or Rabbi at the start of it. It's called the forty Rabbana, so you can Google it, um, and it's a compilation. And these are all duas that are from the Quran. So um, yeah, Rabbana la tuzil qulubana. Oh no. Oh yes, Rabbana la tuakhidna in nasina. Yes, very good, very good, excellent. So yes, exactly. So these are all. Uh, the Rabbana du'as and I have a lesson about it on YouTube if you go to Good Tree Arabic Academy um, on YouTube I have a whole lesson just about the Rabbana du'as like I go through the meaning about it and stuff like that so you can uh, and there's a PDF that you can download I think okay good excellent so inshallah that is that I hope everybody has uh, gotten a chance to uh, copy this down now because i'm going to go back to my screen if you want to take a picture of it then take a picture of it now or take a screenshot of it okay i'm going back to my screen now um yes so so now we know that these are the per personal pronouns now, we don't have time to go through every single, uh, you know, to practice it in depth. But I want your homework. Your homework, inshallah, is to, when you're reading the Quran, I would like you to find at least one example of a word, of any words that have hu, hum, ka, gum, e, and na on the end of it, okay? They're going to be at the end. They're going to be attached to the word. And if you want to send me your homework, you can actually send it to me on email. Uh, it's my email address is, I'll just type in the chat box over here. It's goodtreearabic at gmail.com. Okay. So if you send it to me, then I can actually check your homework if you like. So your homework is uh, to find one example from the Quran, which has um, these personal pronouns on it. But it's completely optional. I mean, if you want to do it, you can do it. If you don't, then you can just uh, 
attend the classes and just do it for yourself, inshallah. Okay, you can do less. Uh, you can do page 17 by yourself. Let's go to page 18, which is the grammar. <clears throat> so basically, you just have to... Oh, yes. So now we're going to practice this concept with um, different words. So we're going to add who, whom, ka, kum, i, and na to the word kitab, to the word deen, and to the word ayat. Okay. So... Who would like to uh, do the first one, Kitab? Go ahead and uh, put your hand up or type me in the chat box and I'll unmute you. So you just do Kitab plus Hu equals Kitabu Hu, for example. It's very easy, guys. Yes, Nabiha, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome, sir. This is. Kitabu, kitabuhu, his book, mm -hmm. kitabuhu, their book, mm -hmm. kitabuka, or kitabuki, I mean, related to single plural, your book, kitabukum, your books, no, their, their book, sorry. No, no, no. Oh, it's your book. Means... Your book. You're like many. Yes. Men. Yeah, it still means your book, but yeah. the your is referring to people. Yeah. Yeah. Kitabi, my book. Kitabuna, our book. Okay, excellent. Jazakumullah khair. Thank you. Uh, yes, please write the translation. I don't have space, so I'm not writing the translation, but you should write it. Who would like to do the second one? Dean. I can I can try to do the Dean one. Go ahead, go ahead. Um uh Dean mm -hmm. Um he's Dean. Mm -hmm. Uh Dean uh, is that their Dean? Yep. Their religion. Um Dean Dean okay. mm -hmm. Um your Dean. Mm -hmm. Dinukum, uh, your Dean plural. Mm -hmm. Dini, uh, my Dean. Um, di, di na na, mm -hmm. our Dean. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. And who would like to do the last one? Uh, yet? Any volunteers for the last one? Uh, yet? Yes, Aisha, go ahead. Uh, okay, so um, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, ayat, ayatuhu, um, ayatuhu, which is his ayat, mm -hmm. ayatuhum, which is their ayat, ayatuka. Um, your aya, ayatukum, your aya is pl but plural. Mm -hmm. um, ayati, mm. is that right? Ayati, which is yep. my aya, and ayatuna, which is our aya. Yep, excellent. So, yes, very good. Does ayati come up in the, does it come up in the Quran? Ayati? Yeah, it does, it does. Yeah, it does. Okay, okay. Ayati. Yeah, yes, yeah. My verses. Okay. So ayat is the plural of ayatun. Oh, yeah. And ayatun means verse. And ayat with the long ta, it means verses or signs. There's two meanings. So um, yeah, this is a plural. Um, yes, very good. Thank you. Jazakallah khair for that. Well done. And I'm pretty sure that you can find some of these words in the Quran as well. I want you to be aware of these pronouns. Let's go to um, this one over here. Break the Arabic words and write the meanings. Okay, so now we're going and we're 
um, we're revising from the last few lessons as well. Go ahead and type in the chat box. What does ismuhu mean? What does ism mean and who? So now you know that ismuhu is not just one word. It's actually two words or two parts joined together. Ismuhu. Ismuhu means, yes, his name. So you can say, oh, ismuhu Khalid. Ismuhu Muhammad. Ismuhu Zaid. Whatever. Or Zaid Ismuhu. Okay. Uh, you know? Yeah, okay, good. Allahu Rabbuna wa Rabbukum. No, oh, so this is a long sentence. Allahu means Allah. Yes, go ahead and type in the chat box. Allah. And then you have to put is to make it a complete sentence. Allah is Rabbuna. What does Rabbuna mean? So we put na. This is see Rabbuna over here. Allah is our Lord. And wa means and. And Rabbukum means Allah is our Lord and your Lord. And it's talking to you. Plural. Yes. Very good. Uh, what does yawmuhum mean? Yawmuhum. So it doesn't matter if it's yawmahum, yawmuhum, yawmihim. It's all the same meaning. And the meaning is, yes, yawmuhum means their day. Okay, good. What does fa rabbuka? Ah, what does fa rabbuka mean? Because fa is one. Rabbuka, rabbu is something else. And then ka is on the end. So I'll give everybody a chance to write it. Fa rabbuka, what do you think it means? Yes, fa means thus or so. And Rabbuka means your Lord. Yes, very good. For Rabbuka Rahman. For Rabbuka Ala Kulli Shain Qadir. I don't know. Something. And then, ah, oh, how about this one? Min. What does Min mean? Min Rabbihim. Can anyone remember what Min means? Min. Min means from. Yes, good. From. Min means from. And then Rabbihim. Rabbihim would mean. Min Rabbihim. From. Their Lord. Not your Lord. Their Lord. Okay. Good. Okay. Excellent. Um, I'm going to give you one more. Let's try to do. What does Maliku? No, not Malik. I'll just do Malik. What does Maliku who mean? Maliku who? Now that you've learned some new words, Maliku who? Oh, we have some different answers here. Malikuhu. Malikuhu means, Malik means king. And who means his. So Malikuhu means his king. Good. And another one, let's see. Mm. Okay. Alamuna. What does alam mean? Anyone remember alamuna and na? Alamuna. Rabbil alamin. Alamuna. What does alamuna mean? Alamuna, yes, 
our world. The island means world or universe. Good. Okay. And I'll give you one more. Okay. We learned this word. Aiba. Aiba datu. Home. Aiba datu home. Mm. So ibada means worship. <clears throat> and whom is it their worship or your worship? Ibada to whom? Yes, it is their worship. Okay, good. So honestly, you can just get any Arabic word. And you can add these pronouns to it and you can make like a sentence out of it. Okay. Okay, great. Now let's go on to the next exercise over here. Translate the following into Arabic. So we're doing the other way around. And their deen. And their deen. How would you say that in Arabic? And is wa. Their deen. So we did it actually on that table as well. Their Dean. Dean. Also write Dean first. And then their. How do you say their? Is it Dean Ukum? Are you sure? Or is it Dean Hum? Yes, Dean Hum. Dean Hum, their Dean. Okay. That's okay. Okay, next one. Wadina home. Very good. Excellent. Next one. And he is our Lord. Ah, oh, so this is a complete sentence. I'll give you a hint. This he, it's from the previous lesson. You have to say he. Remember he, they, it's different from his. And he is our Lord. So our obviously wa means and. How do you say he? First word that we learnt. Yeah. He is Hua. Remember Hua? Wahua. Our Lord Rabbu Na. Yes. Wahua Rabbuna. Good. Wahua Rabbuna. MashaAllah. We're already making sentences. Great. Okay, next one. You are my Rabb. So how do you say you in Arabic? And then you say, my Rob. You. How do you say you? <sighs> no, you is not Hua. He is Hua. You is Anta. Anta, yes. So don't get confused between the detached and the attached. Remember, these are words. You is a word by itself. Anta. And my Rob, how do you say my Rob? My Lord. Anta, yes, very good. Fahmida. Uh, and Aisha, very good. Anta Rabbi. Yes, Anta Rabbi. You are my Rob. Okay, good. And the next one, your Lord is merciful. Your Lord. So now... This is a word by itself. Your Lord. And then the second word is merciful. How do you say your Lord? Your Lord. So your Lord is Rabbu. And then Rabbu. Ka. Okay. Rabbu Ka. Your Lord, Rabbu Ka, Ka. 
And then merciful, how do you say merciful, everybody? Rabuka. Um, you can say Rabuka ar Rahman. Uh, you can spell Rahman like this Rabuka ar Rahman. Okay, your Lord is merciful. And the last one, how do you say we ask for help? So you just copy and paste from the ayah. We ask for help. Yes. It's just nasta'een. Nasta'een. Iyaka na'abdu wa iyaka nasta'een. Okay, good. Excellent. So that is pretty much it for our lesson today. Mashallah. I think we got through quite a bit. Alhamdulillah. We didn't get to go to lesson four, but inshallah we can do that next week. But please revise what you have uh, memorized today because we're gonna because we're going to be um, uh, building upon what we have learned this week. So Nabiha, you're asking how to differentiate that it is not but attached, but a detached, and vice versa. So as you can clearly see, the attached pronoun is attached. You know, so you know you see over here. Ibadatuhum, Yawmuhum, you know, Rabbihim. But the detached pronoun, Hua, Anta, you know, these are detached. It's not, you're not going to say Rabbu Hua or Anta, Rabbu Anta, you know. So you need to um, just basically practice this. And remember that the detached pronouns, they're words by themselves. See, hua, anta, etc. Does that make sense? And you just have to practice. Like sometimes, yes, it does get a bit confusing, but they're two separate things, you know? Yeah. Anyone else have any other questions? Okay, good. So inshallah, we'll end our class today at that. And uh, if you want to send me your homework, you can. And inshallah, other than that, I will see you next week for Arabic or I'll see you tomorrow for our Hadith class. So you can send me your homework on goodtreearabic at gmail.com.